All right. My name is Fish Wang. I'm the first guy in this uh, author list that's currently in display on the screen. I'm very glad to be here. It's my great honor to give you a talk on our work, Rambler, Making Reassembly Great Again. This work is joint work by a group of researchers from SAC Lab, UC Santa Barbara. Uh, to be honest, while I was giving this name to the paper, I wasn't expecting the result as I see it right now in the real world. So if you're happy, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> I'll start from the motivation of our work. We all love open source software, but unfortunately, we still have a lot of proprietary software running on those modern devices, right? See your laptop, computer, um, embedded devices, routers, whatsoever. You, for users, or for us researchers, we don't have access to the source code. That means if we want to patch them, if we want to harden so the software, basically it requires advanced techniques like binary re rewriting. There are multiple available solutions of binary re rewriting, including the pure dynamic ones like DBI, or static, or some, some of them are static, uh, have static components plus dynamic components like uh, BCFI, or its, success, its successor, uh, PSI, or a pure static technique. So our solution, Rambler, is built on a pure static technique called binary reassembling, which the reason that we built our, uh, built our solution based on binary reassembling was because, in theory, um, the execution overhead of binary reassembling is really low. You might ask, what is binary reassembling? Basically, assuming we have a piece, of binary, a piece of binary program, we disassemble it, we get a piece of disassemb a disassembled assembly, assembly code. Uh, in, this, in this image, in this disassembled assembly code, we have some absolute addresses that are basically pointers or memory references that are pointing to different memory locations or program locations in the, bin in the binary. Uh, you might notice that this piece of assembly code is not exactly the same as the assembly code that, that we write every day. Well, maybe not every day, but we write daily. In the sense of, this is, you know, we, 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 are, we are more familiar with it because it has labels instead of absolute addresses for those pointers or memory references. Why is it different? We'll see in a bit. With this um, disassembled assembly code, we have absolute addresses. If we want to make some, add some patches, add instructions, add you know, some, some data, that basically means when we want to assemble this piece of patched, binary, patched assembly back to the binary, the pointers are not pointing to the original intended data anymore. That means the assembled binary will probably not work. We call this piece of assembly in a non-relocatable assembly. Instead, for the normal handwritten assemblies that uses labels instead of um, absolute addresses, we don't have that problem. And the assembled binary will work. We call it reassembled or a relocatable assembly. So to solve that problem, assuming that we have a piece of disassembled assembly and we want to assemble it back to a working binary with our patches, what can we do? The solution uh, is called symbolization. Basically, we want to convert those uh, absolute addresses prop, uh, into their corresponding labels properly, right? So given a layout of a binary, a very naive strategy would be, you know, we, we take a look at the values of those integers. If they fall into any of the memory region, we just convert them into labels. So the next page will have some assembly code. Uh, there will be a lot. I'm sorry if that scares you. All right, you don't have to read in, uh, individual, individual instructions. What I'm going to show here is uh, how, 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 do we, how we do the, the conversion. We start from a few numbers. Those numbers are pretty small. It, they do not fall into any memory sections of this binary, so they're not pointers. There are some other, there are some other numbers, obviously, fall into the, um, they fall into those memory sections, and they're pointers. The problem is a little bit harder for 
bytes in the data section because we don't really have uh, the boundaries between the bytes, right? We cannot really easily split them into integers. So there's an assumption. Based on the observation, most compilers would, po would put pointers at aligned addresses uh, for the sake of speed. So we can just uh, sp split them at uh, aligned addresses and then see, oh, there are also pointers, great. So this sort of um, data alignment assumptions as well as this naive strategy has been implemented in a pioneering work called Euroboros that does binary reassembly. This piece of work has been, has been presented in uh, Usenix Security 2015. However, there are problems that uh, in, the, in the symbolization procedure of this simple na or of this naive symbolization strategy which are basically, you know, there are some pointers in real-world binaries that don't look like pointers, or there are some values that are not pointers in the real-world real binary that looks like pointers. So that gives us false positives and false negatives. Here's an example of a false positive coming from the naive uh, strategy where you have a, a floating point variable in a binary which has a four-byte representation that coincidentally collides with a pointer. An example of a false negative is, uh, uh, comes from compiler op optimization techniques, like constant folding. In this piece of source code, we only care about one single line. In this, in this single line, there are two constants, uh, which is uh, uh, the, the base address of the counters array and a, up, and a character uppercase A. A compiler, when optimization is enabled, is able to figure out, oh, there are two constants, let's try uh, folding them together. Which basically makes, uh, it, takes the, it, it takes the existing uh, base, base address minus a constant, create a new base address. And unfortunately, this new base address does not fall into any memory section, which proves to be a problem for naive approach. Well, it doesn't point to, to any memory section, why is it a pointer, right? So our approach, Rambler, is designed to handle those issues. Unlike naive strategy that greatly relies on assumptions of how data is aligned, where data is put, and a lot of heuristics, Rambler has a different approach. Rambler greatly, greatly relies on um, running program analysis and extract as much information as possible for individual integers in the binary. And we only resort to heuristics and assumptions when we cannot get enough information for each integer. Which basically means uh, we are not looking at individual integers in isolation of the context, but we want to understand what the type of, the of those integers are based on how they are used by the program. So here's the basic pipeline of Rambler. Rambler takes strip binaries, or maybe also unstrip binaries, but we can strip it. Take strip binaries as input. It first performs a CFD recovery to recover the control flow graph. And then it performs content classification to basically identify the pointers in the binary. And with that information, civilization and reassembly comes very naturally. The content classification is the core of our approach, and I will put more time to um, present this approach. So Rambler is built on a binary analysis platform called Anger. Anger has its own CFG implementation. Uh, we, we also use that CFG recovery uh, implementation in, in Anger. We built on top of that an iterative refinement where you know, we put our recovered pointers, recovered jump tables from future steps back into the CFG recovery step to refine the CFG and get a better control flow graph. This is a Rumble performs content classification to understand data types, pointers in a binary. The basic, the basic idea is is that in binaries, different types of data are used differently. For example, here is how a, typic, uh, here is how a typical pointer is used. You know, a typical pointer, usually it falls into an existing memory section, as I said before, or it can be close to a, an existing memory, memory section due to constant folding. And at some point, it should be um, uh, dereferenced. Unlike a pointer, a typical value might, in, might involve multiple arithmetic operations that you'll never see, or you rarely see them being applied on the pointers. Here are 
a lot of types that Rumbler supports, that Rumbler currently supports, that, that falls into um, four different ca categories, including primitive types, not, po not, uh, not terminated strings, jump tables, and arrays of primitive types. Rumbler basically relies on two different techniques to perform content, content classific, uh, classification. The first one is that Rumbler can recognize data types during CFD recovery. Here's a very simple, here is a very simple example. When, when we use the instruction move SD to access a piece of memory and copy the data into um, XMM registers, we can safely assume that the, the memory being referenced must be holding a, a floating point variable because that move SD stands for moving scalar, a scalar double precision floating point value from somewhere to somewhere. Another, another approach that Rumbler does content classification is um, based on program slicing and VSA. Here's a simple example of an implementation of uh, a piece of switch construct in the C program. We put C code here for the ease of understanding. Rumbler takes, uh, on binary, takes binary as input. Assuming that here we want to understand if it is implemented in a jump table, where, where is the jump table? and what are the possible entries in the jump table, and where, where are the new targets of the jump table. We first perf perform a uh, slicing to remove all the code that is not relevant, and then we run VSA on the program slice. A VSA will, uh, will be able to tell us, oh, there are three values for i, which are, zero, one and two, which are zero, 1 and 2, and then there's a jump table somewhere in the, in the memory. It tells, uh, tells us, oh, there's a, there a base address for the jump table that has three entries, um, and for each, of, for each entry in this jump table, there are all pointers and jump targets. Another core technique that Rumbler, uh, Rumbler does is, is called base pointer reattribution. Recall this example that I, uh, that I talked about in the, program section, in the problem section, where a false negative is, uh, is, uh, rises from constant folding. You know, somehow the new base base pointer, the new ba uh, the new base address does not fall into any memory section, so it wasn't classified as a pointer by the by the naive approach. What we do here is we program uh, we generate a program slice in, with both this new uh, with both this new base pointer and the other data that is used when creating a new pointer together in this in this program slice, and then we run VSA on it. The, 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 the intuition is that no matter when in your, during your execution you have a pointer that you want to dereference, it must be pointing to some valid memory, memory location. Otherwise, your program will, will crash. Um, based on how we usually use pointers, we usually have a base pointer and then put um, offsets onto, onto that pointer. The base pointer and the new pointer should be pointing to the same uh, memory region. Now we know that, hey, this base, base, this base pointer, sorry, this new pointer points to the BSS section, which means the base pointer should also belong to the, the BSS section. In our symbolization, we can do, oh, it belongs to the BSS section plus, oh, sorry, minus an offset. Basically, what, what we're doing here, in a sense, is constant unfolding. We're trying to recover some information that are lost during constant folding procedure. We also implemented some, imp implemented some heurist, uh, safety heuristics that perform state the consumer check. Um, that handles issues where you have pointer, oh, uh, that handles issues where you have things like pointer decryption and encryption, where you have a piece of data that exhibits features of both pointers and non-pointers, right? For example, you can take two pointers, XOR them together, come up with a new pointer, dereference it. In these cases, we believe there is no generic way to handle them. Um, Rumbler simply gives up. And after that, the symbolization and the reassembly, which comes pretty naturally, and you can, result to, you can, you can uh, read our paper or take, take a look at our code to see what we do exactly there. Here comes the evaluation. We evaluated, we evaluated Rumbler on two different data sets um, that, are basic, uh, that are Core Utils 825 and some binaries from the Cyber Grand Challenge, which is uh, an event organized by DARPA. There are, there are 250 something uh, programs in all. We compile them under different compilers with different optimization levels on, on different architectures, and we have roughly 2,000 binaries in all. Well, the good thing about those data sets is that we have really comprehensive data, uh, we, have, we have really comprehensive 
test cases for every single binary, which means we can run those test cases and then see if, if we have broken the binary or not during the reassembling. So we evaluated our um, Rambler as well as another solution called Rambler Fast, which is Rambler with some fast heuristics, and Euroboros, our successor. Well, not necessarily successor, but the pioneer work in this field. So we perform better than your uh, than your borrowers on, on, all, on all cases, and our success rate are uh, were either 98 percent or 99 percent. Basically, we broke like less than five binaries out of those 2,000 binaries. We also used um, as Team Shellfish. We we participated in the Cyber Grand Challenge organized by DARPA, uh, and, we, take, and we, we were in the finals last year. There is our, um, uh, there, there is the, the, the big machine rack holds our entire cyber reasoning system that, that was running there. Uh, Rumbler was the foundation of our, pa of our static uh, uh, binary patching strategies, where we, we, uh, Rumbler helps us to patch vulnerabilities of fast control flows, optimizing and hardening binaries. And Rumbler help, uh, helped us to get third place in the Cyber Grand Challenge, which, you know, it shows the applicability of Rumbler. To conclude, we identified several challenges in reassembling, and we proposed a novel composition of a set of static analysis techniques, and on top of that, we developed a systematic approach to reassemble strip binaries. Rambler is open sourced. It was even open sourced before I wrote this paper and pushed online on GitHub. We will release extra data sets and usable, and usable tools uh, soon, maybe within next month. Usable tools include, we have a developed IDA plugin for Rambler, which means you can, you, you can um, easily reassemble binaries in IDA. We have an awesome, well, we have a good binary patching framework that we use for, during the CGC. Uh, we, will, we, uh, we will also release it with the Rumbler support. And also uh, in, uh, in the GUI for Anger, it's called Anger Management, uh, we will add patching support, which basically allows you to do, easy, to do easily patching. With that, I appreciate everyone who's present here to listen to my talk. I know it's pretty late. This is the last talk of the, uh, of the entire uh, conference. And I'm happy to take any question. Thank you.